Well, hello! Nice to see you again! Ruski Sigiv Lights at Nimis Moich Lupim Hesekov with Miri. I think you all know that. It's no secret. Anyway, today we will be doing a video about the Slavic languages. How well do I understand different Slavic languages that I've never studied? I did one about the Germanic languages uh, a few weeks back, and you should absolutely check that out if you haven't already. But today, we'll be, I'll be reading four different texts in four different Slavic languages that I've never studied, and uh, I'll, we'll be seeing how well I can understand them. I'm at a bit of a disadvantage here, because I speak one Slavic language, and it's not my native language, so there we go. But I think it'll give you a good impression of how close they are to each other. They are very closely related, they are very similar. If you speak one, it's quite easy to learn another one. Without further ado, let's commence this excellent experiment, starting with a Wikipedia article about Tito in Serbian. So it says Tito's name, and then his like date of birth and death. Um, he was a he was right. Yeah, it was. I think that's that's what this says. A Yugoslavian communist revolutionary and mm, it's a title. Now, this is a title for the ending. Um, I, I suppose it's statesman, right? Like, like that, that would be my guess. I'm not quite certain, but I think that's what it says. And he, he carried out different so this is functions, right? And this is as an ending relating to, and I can see this is the same as this. So I suppose it's state-related functions from and then the years 1943 to his death in 1980. To be fair, I was guessing, right? But I understood it. Excellent. I was able to understand that reasonably well, I'd say. Um, yeah, I got it for the most part. There was one word. In there, which was a bit tricky, but apart from that, I got it. Um, so, you know, it's pretty easy. I think I'll call that a success. The next language will be Bulgarian, and we will be reading an article about the Bulgarian language. The Bulgarian language is an Indo-European language. I assume that this is is from the group uh, the of the East Slavic languages, which makes up a not not prepared no no a something like a sub subgroup this is the official language of the in the Bulgarian Republic and one of the twenty for official languages in the European or of the European, I think this this means this preposition, which would be on with like on in Russian, um, seems to me be either in or of in Bulgarian of the European Union. This is yeah, that is it is whatever the official language. Um, that was pretty easy actually. Yes, I got that right. Yeah, Bulgarian wasn't too hard. Um... Maybe a bit harder than Serbian, I don't know. But I was able to understand it quite well. I got the gist of it, at least. The next language will be a very, very interesting language that a lot of people don't actually know about. A lot of people don't know that this is a language that exists. I'm, of course, talking about Upper Sorbian. We'll be reading an article about Lower Sorbian in Upper Sorbian. Now, Sorbian is a Slavic language which is spoken in the east of Germany. I don't have Google Translate for this one, so you will just assume I got it right. If I think I got it right, we'll assume that's the case. If you, know, if you speak... Um, Upper Sorbian, or Lower Sorbian for that matter, you can uh, correct me in the comments and uh, or tell me how well I understood. So Lower Sorbian, and then you have the, the, the German title for it, Nieder Sorbisch, or Wendish, and then you have the Polish name, um, is a West Slavic, which means language, that is... Mm, I assume this means spoken in this region here in something places or a place something about place in oh in, and then there's a place there there's a name okay so in this region and in this region so this is and 
and this is in, and this is this region. Okay, so it's both in those regions. It's an independent something language, okay, which um, with uh, with its own writing system and grammar, high Sorbian. Oh, I mean, it's it's closest uh, existing relative. I think so. Now, I, again, I can't check if I got it right. I, th I this was the hardest one so far. Absolutely. If any of you speak Upper Sorbian, you can tell me if I got it somewhat right. I, well, I think I, I think I got the gist of it. Yeah, this was absolutely the hardest one so far. No doubt about that. Uh, I could understand more or less what was going on, I would say. I can't check it, but I assume I got it sort of reasonably right. To a certain extent, at least. I got the gist of it. So, I guess we can call that a success as well. The final language we'll be looking at today will be a language that's very closely related to Russian. Um, Ukrainian, uh, which again, I've never studied, and um, we'll be reading a, an article about Pomerania. On the grounds of Pomerania, there were also... Um... The, the Low German language was also widespread. I would even hear Plattdeutsch written with the, with the Cyrillic alphabet. That looks quite quite amusing. Um, the citizens of Pomerania were... Hmm, not quite certain. Influenced. Something influenced uh, with a trading and pirating around the Baltic Sea. Uh, so this is, in Russian, this would be uh, at, but I think here it will be like uh, around the time of, right? Because this is quite, this is really quite easy if you speak Russian, but this is the Middle Ages. Um, with the Hanseatic League. Uh, yeah, Hanseatic League, right? Um, or union, as it's the word that's used here, with the Swedish and Danish um, kingdoms. As well as, yes, yeah, as, as well as a principality, something like that. As well as, well, this is plural, using the instrumental case. Um, I don't, different, looks like, yeah, it is, yeah, I, I, mm, I can see a cognate there, or it could be a specific place, it could be a certain type of, um, of, um, and, or oh, by, like enclaves, connected to the Roman Empire, alright, I think that's enough, we'll use Google Translate and see, if I got it right, I think I did. I seem to have gotten that quite right. It wasn't very difficult. This is the easiest one so far, absolutely. Um, but it's good fun. I mean, Russian and Ukrainian are very closely related to each other. If you speak Russian, uh, learning Ukrainian is not very difficult. It's something you can do quite quickly, I would imagine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Wait, something's missing, isn't it? I think something's missing. Hello! Oh God, no, not him. I don't think you understood it at all. Oh, shut up.